Cities all over the nation are trying to come up with ways to deal with the opioid crisis. In Boyd County, Kentucky, one person dies every eight days as a result of a drug overdose. Well, some of the kids who live in that county decided to take matters into their own hands. The students at Ashland Middle School banded together to help those on the front lines of the epidemic by creating a device that helps first responders safely pick up and dispose of dangerous used needles and drug paraphernalia. So joining us now to talk all about this project is Ashland Middle School teacher Michael Pauley and Ashland Middle School student Isaac Campbell. Thank you so much for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank so you for having us. This is very cool. Isaac, what inspired you and your classmates to design and make a device like this? Um, you know, in our in our in our area, we're seeing a lot of um, needles left around our parks and our community, and we all have little brothers and sisters and um, relatives who we don't want to get stuck by these needles because of not only the deadly diseases, but I mean it's also painful to be stuck by a needle. So we just want to be able to create something that way they don't have to go out and risk being hurt. So um, it just really inspired us and gave us a real drive to really get it done to be able to do our best. Uh, that's it's so wonderful that you're able to do something like this and I wonder Michael uh, what was it about the lessons classroom instruction that the kids were able to take away from what they learned to apply to developing a device like this well you know the, the kids are studying science technology engineering and math and I think um, it, it was important for the kids to, to be able to see that they're able to, to take those skills and apply it to, to real uh, life applications uh, and for middle school students to be able to, to to be able to do that and have an impact on their community, it's just um, you know it's just amazing. Um, and as and as a, as a teacher, it's it's very proud to be able to see those kids to work you know and collaborate together and to be able to use those skills to be able to to do that. I bet. So show us the device. How does it work? Um. So this is our device here. It has flexible teeth. So um, basically, here would be the syringe. Um, the box itself would go around the needle and then the teeth collapse around it. We do a little shake and a little squeeze and the needle's in there. Wow. Oh, that's very cool. That's and so cool. I read that you guys made a smaller version for police investigators if maybe they want to use this. Yes, so the investigators um, sometimes have to use these needles as evidence. So here would be, an, here's an evidence tube that they gave us and here would be the needle. So basically this tube goes around our needle. The evidence tube is opened. It's put in and it's fully enclosed without any harmful diseases touching the officer or the investigator. Perfect, and you know what's also really cool? Not only do they make sort of the regular size device and then one for investigators, but then there's a whole website, a database, where people can sort of upload any information, places that they found needles like this. I mean, this is sort of a complete package, a complete unit that you guys yeah. have produced. Uh, yeah, yes, you know, um, with our website, we really just want our community to be able to have this outreach and learn the dangers of the possibilities of um, needle sticks and um, the the dangers of, of drug ad abuse and drug addiction. Yeah. You, you know, Isaac, we mentioned uh, how difficult it is right now in this day and age in the United States because so many people are facing opioid addiction. How aware were your classmates, beyond the science and the classroom instruction, how aware are you as middle schoolers that the country is facing this and specifically your community, there are so many people that are struggling with addiction? Um, you know, we had classmates whose parents or, um, or anyone or people they may have known have been struggling with drug abuse. Um, we see on the news um, so many deaths. We see in our community, not community, um, these um, deaths from this um, drug addiction. So I think that we were aware that this was a problem, but when we started really digging in and doing some more research, we, we saw how it was not, not only affecting our small town, but also our nation as a whole. Yeah, and, that, and Michael, that's sort of, you know, it's, on one hand, this is such a great thing that these kids have been able to do. On the other hand, you know, as adults and as parents and, and uncles and brothers, we, you know, we want to protect children. We don't want them to know about the horrors of the world. And yet they're faced with that uh, every day. We can't shield them from it. I wonder, um, when you see them taking the initiative like this, how does that make you feel um, as, a, as an educator and perhaps even as a parent? Oh, wow. It's, it's, it's incredible. I, you know, we were just actually talking about this uh, this morning. I think sometimes um, as adults, we want, to, you know, like we want to solve all the problems, right? So 
um, we want to protect our kids. Um, but sometimes, you know, we've got to be able to include these, these young adults because they are the future and they have some really good ideas and uh, it's just amazing to, to, you know, kind of stand back and, and, and watch them to collaborate and, and problem solve and, and, and to come up with, uh, with solutions. So I think um, the lesson for me as an adult and as a parent uh, and as a teacher is we don't put limitations on these, on these students. We don't, we don't want to tell them that um, they're not old enough to do something. So uh, I think with leadership and, and uh, some guidance and you know, to be able to facilitate in the, in the correct way, um, you know, the future is extremely bright for, for, um, for um, you know, the industry and, and the communities uh, with, with what these young people are able to do. You know, yeah. we have here, we've covered a number of the teacher strikes across the country. We know uh, teachers went on strike in, in your state. And this is an example of what happens when you invest in education. Right. The, these kids had a 3D printer. They were yeah. able to right. try this, this, this thing out and experiment on, on something. And maybe this will be something that, you know, they'll be able to mass produce. Right, yeah, we hope so. Yeah, we've been we've been looking into many possibilities through um, patents and also um, injection molding and mass producing because our thought on this idea is is um, if we're not using our technology to help others, then it's just a toy. So we think that our project is um, something to help others. So we want to be able to get it in our hands uh, and the first responders' hands as soon as possible. Love it. Yeah, you know the other thing I really love and um, is that we are you know. Kids generally are focused on when you do something for your community, their bake sales, and those things are important. Philanthropy is important, but I love the idea of this generating from like science and technology, where you see most of the inve um, the investments that are being made in this country, most of the entrepreneurial spirit of America is now focused on technology. And as somebody who came from a proud liberal arts background where the only science that I studied in college was political science, and it's not real science, I love the idea that you know that you know you're you're learning about science and technology and math and you're applying those to developing a real product it's not just you know not just diminish what other people do with uh, with other um, aspects of, of, an, of education but I just love that this is like a specific tool that was developed got to invest in education indeed Michael Pauly yeah. and Stem Campbell think or rather uh, you know what I was thinking I was thinking stem when you were Ste talking about education that's what we're talking about science technology yeah. right right um, you say that's your nickname <laughs> Isaac I <said>. stem Campbell <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty good Michael Pauly and Isaac Campbell thank you so much guys thank, thank you. you thank you